Joining me now from our bureau in Washington, D.C., Executive Director of Honest Elections Project, Jason Sneed. Jason, uh, what are your biggest concerns when it comes to mail-in voting? Because we already have that process. I know this would be at a much larger scale, so of course it's going to open up the possibility of voter fraud. But how exactly would voter fraud be committed? Well, we've known for some time now that absentee balloting, any time really that you take voting away from the controlled or monitored uh, confines of a precinct, is more vulnerable to voter fraud. And that's why when you actually look at proven instances of fraud, as I did when I was at the Heritage Foundation for some time, you see that more often than not, it involves something uh, relating to the absentee voting process. You can have people who go into voters' homes and uh, attempt to intimidate them, bribe them, or coerce them into voting in a particular way. People can get their hands on mail ballots and deliberately disenfranchise voters by altering or destroying them. Ballots can get lost in the mail, uh, arrive too late, or they can be rejected for any number of reasons. The voters say makes uh, an innocent enough mistake by accidentally voting for two people for president, something that happens and something that can be corrected when you're voting in person, but which is a fatal error if you're voting by mail. So there's all sorts of traps and pitfalls. And that's why I'm very concerned about moving so quickly to jury rig a vote by mail system this November. I think that is ripe for, for error. It invites fraud and it is not a good path for a successful November election. Jason, I don't know if you saw this video it came out a couple weeks ago but a lot of people I know hadn't seen the video so I want to play it for our audience it's of a cat who died 12 years ago who received his voter registration and uh, there's a local news story of it roll tape Cody doesn't get much mail Cody is a cat he died 12 years ago. The family keeps his ashes in this green container. So the Tims were surprised and a bit amused when they saw what came in the mail. We have a voter registration application for Cody Tims. It even came with a return envelope. How'd this happen? I mean, it's not reality. He's a cat. Here he is. Yeah, but Jason, uh, voter fraud and all these potential errors, that's just a myth. That doesn't happen in real life. Did you, have you seen this story? Cody the cat. I have, and I, ha I had to chuckle. Um, it made me wonder if cats have nine lives, do they also get nine votes? Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, at any rate, it, it, it's, we can laugh about it because it's obviously a funny story, but there are clear instances in which we know that our voter rolls have inaccuracies on them. We know that there are people who commit voter registration fraud, for instance. We know that there are people who are not eligible to vote who remain on the rolls. We know that people move away or die every year, and yet they remain on the rolls in their, in their old states or they used to live. And that's why you see when, when we had states this cycle, New Jersey, Nevada, that rushed in to vote by mail and were mailing ballots automatically to every registration on file, that ballots were being left on sidewalks because they couldn't be delivered. Ballots were being tossed in trash cans because they couldn't be delivered, and they were being left behind by the Postal Service. And we see in Michigan, for instance, where ballot application forms are going out, that people are getting two, three, four ballot applications for people who used to live at their address. So we know there are real problems problems with our voter rolls. They need to be cleaned up. And in fact, my group is involved in a lawsuit in Michigan to do just that. But these rolls are not reliable enough for us to be automatically mailing ballots to every registration. What's the price tag? And can states even afford this? Well, states are going to certainly be, I think, struggling with, uh, with resource questions and trying to put their dollars where they can make the most impact. Uh, right now, Congress is debating whether or not to provide additional funding, and I think that if they do decide to offer additional money to support state efforts this November, that that funding should be free of any sorts of politically driven mandates, like what we keep seeing uh, the House Democrats attempt to put into their legislation. If you look at the HEROES Act, which was passed earlier this year, it contains something along the lines of 75 pages of new limits and new requirements that will be applied not only this cycle, but forever. It's permanent changes to the way our democracy functions. Functions. And it's a long litany of, of liberal policy objectives, uh, eliminating or, or dramatically scaling back voter ID laws, uh, permanently changing elections in, in a whole host of ways. That's not the direction that we need to go. What states are doing right now, like Maryland, for instance, doing a hybrid approach where you give voters the option to choose to request an absentee ballot or vote safely in person in line with CDC guidelines, I think that is the better, more cost-effective route. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.